Hi, it's Terry. I have been maintaining 180 pound weight loss with low carb, low calorie, meat focused eating since August of 2022. It's been a long time since I made my salads. We'll see if I can remember. I might have forgotten. Just kidding. Anyway, we're going to start off by getting all our vegetables cut up. So let's work through getting all of our vegetables cut up and then we'll make them. I just want you all to see the whole process for how I'm going to do it this time. Start with my big old rutabaga. <clears throat> I really did not need to get one this big. I did, but I didn't need to. So first off, I'm going to cut off the outer edges, like the ends of, I mean the ends of each side. Rutabaga is a very dense vegetable. So if you're new to my channel, I ate rutabaga throughout my weight loss progress. So um, I made it fit my macros. Um, and when I was keto, I, I used rutabaga. Um, and then after I reached my goal and I increased my vegetable intake, I have added um, some squash as well. But you can go back. I have an entire playlist dedicated to the rutabaga. Let me just tell you, man, because rutabaga, oh, rutabaga and Greek seasoning, they're both life. Um, so, all right, let me quit fiddling with that. And listen, my, I, I assume everybody's is the same. <clears throat> rutabaga is a root. Um, I, my, okay, let me, I'll keep, bleh, bleh, bleh. Rutabaga is waxy. After it's, after it's, you know, gathered from the garden, they dip rutabaga in wax. They don't do that to potatoes, I don't think, but they do rutabaga and jicama. I think it's because they're not as popular as potatoes, <clears throat> and so they need them to last longer so that they can last longer in the store. But the wax doesn't hurt. I mean, you know, it's not a big deal. But, um, so if I was going to cook it, I would microwave the wax off, but I'm not. I want it raw. So, <clears throat> now I'm looking for my peeler here. Here we go. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. Um, so now I got my peeler and I'm just going to go around and peel off this outer edge. I've done a knife before and I've done a peeler before. For some reason, for a while, the peeler wasn't working. I don't know what was going on with it, but the last several times I did it, I did good. You just, I, but for some reason, this peeler works. Now, if I use this other this traditional peeler, in the past, I couldn't get this one to work. I don't know. We can try it again. It's like this one doesn't go as deep as that one. It's maybe not as sharp. I'm not really sure. But this kind of peeler does not work for me. So with my rutabaga, it has to be this kind of peeler for whatever reason. Um, like I said, if I was going to be cooking this one, I'd microwave it first and it'd be way easier uh, to peel. But I love raw rutabaga. What is rutabaga? Rutabaga is a cross between cabbage and and turnip. It has a distinct flavor. It's not sharp and bitter to me like cabbage and a turnip. Um, <clears throat> some people like to use turnips and radishes <clears throat> um, for things, but for me, for my taste buds, I really like the rutabaga way better. Now, it's more carbs, so you have to adjust how you're going to eat you know, if you want to add a rutabaga. I didn't just add a rutabaga and um, and up my carbs. When I ate a rutabaga, I, um, I made sure I ate less of something else to help keep my macros in check. So, uh, to keep my total carbs in check. So, um, you have to decide what you want for you. Because, you know, we're all on a weight loss, well, many of us are on a weight loss journey. But not all of us have the same goals and the same macro. Some of y'all have said that you're not even low carb. You just watch me because because you like me. And so anyway, so um, 
we're all kind of on our own journey, so we got to figure out what works best for us in our journey. Um, the reason why I'm using these uh, uh, paper plates is because because of the waxy texture, the waxy coating, <clears throat> I it's, it leaves a film wherever it sits. So I, like back here, you see the hickma, I have it sitting on a paper plate because I just don't want it to get on my counter. I know I can wipe my counter off. I do know that. And I, but if I were to use, um, you know, like the, 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 um, all oh, my disposable, uh, what do you call that? Disposable, um, oh, for heaven's sakes, Terry, cutting board. I have a disposable cutting board. Then, like I said, it leaves that gummy texture on it and I don't like it. I just don't like it. It's funny. I, I'm a texture person about things I touch. But not things I eat. Like I don't really, I'm not a temperature or texture person when it comes to my food. But I don't like touching things that are yucky. It's just who I am. So anyway, <clears throat> all right, we about got this booger done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over it a few more times with this and get the rest of these little pieces off, and I'll be back. Next up, I have to get this cut in half. Like I said, rutabaga is very dense, and in order to do that, I have to take this. Um, I don't know why I can't remember what this is. I always have to look up and uh, cleaver because Gloria sent me this and I always have to look up and you know, I, I don't just keep you guys this stuff up on my wall for you all. I keep it up there for me too. Cause if I'm like, okay, now wait a minute. Where, where, what is this called? Like I was able to look up a Gloria's card and see the word cleaver. But anyway, I can't talk when I hit it cause it messes up the sound. So I am going to cut this. I'm going to hit this and cut it in half. one half well a third of it <clears throat> but if you I don't know if, see it's just so dense that cutting it in half with a regular knife is just way too difficult well I got it started now I can't pull it out so I'm gonna have to do this <clears throat> but that this is what I was doing before Gloria got me this so this you know, this is made for you to hit on the back of it. And whereas a knife, you really should not hit it. So she saved my knife. Um, so I'm going to wash this. And then now it's in a place where we can cut it. Let me wash this off so I can put it away. Hang on. Since I had so much rutabaga, I want to show you. I did go on and make some as fine as I like for my, um, when I do chaffles. See how fine that is? That's when I do my, my baffles. I like it really fine, like almost like rice. So now I'm gonna, it's gonna, I'm gonna have three things of it. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, I understand that maybe I'm blessed with the Walmart I have. I don't know if every Walmart has it. That big rutabaga was $3 per rutabaga. So mine is not by pound, it's three two ninety eight dollars per rutabaga. So look at all of this rutabaga I got. So I'll be, I, this would probably make about eight baffles, chaffles, whatever you call it. This is probably going to be two to three works, weeks worth of salads, or I could turn this into soup. I could turn it into whatever I wanted to. But you see these three big, this was $3, literally $3 right here worth of rutabaga. Now in the wintertime, they're going to be smaller or, or I don't know, whenever they're not in season, they're going to be smaller and not look as good. So when I get a rutabaga, you will see me get the biggest, best one I can find. Because it's not per pound, it's just per rutabaga. So I'm going to put a lid on this one. And we're going to name this one. I'm going to label this one as Baffa, B-A, Baffa, Bega. So I know that whenever I want to make a Baffa, Chaffle, whatever you want to call it. When I want to make one, I'll use this one. And I will store it. I put a paper towel under it on it. And I'll turn it upside down. This helps it last longer. Rutabaga lasts about two weeks in the refrigerator for me. Especially if I have it turned upside down and have that paper towel soaking it up. So that is, I'm going to set this aside because this is going to be my baffle bag. Actually, I'll put the thing up there so I can see it. All right. So now we got that cut up. Next, we're going to do something else. Hang on. 
The other thing I use that chopper for, it works so great with red onions because I have a bad time with red onions. So, I'm going to go on and... I love the flavor of red onions, but red onions really hurts my eyes. So, the less time I spill... I spend feeling, I'm like, I have to look away and close my eyes, Do then find what I'm looking at, look away and close my eyes. So that's how I have to do red onions. But this really makes it to where I don't have to. Now, right, I'm going to throw, throw this away, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. I'll be right back. All right, so we got them partially peeled. So now I'm just going to quarter these. Oh, I need the little blade in there. Hang on. Kind of just quarter them up a little bit. Hang on, there's some stringy skin there. Whoo, my eyes. Oh, my eyes, my eyes. Who nailed it? That's why I buy the white onions already cut up. <clears throat> but I love the flavor of red onions. Man, oh man, oh man, do I love it. All right, where's my top? Here we go. Hold on. Okay, so there's my red onions. Look at that, nice and chopped up. Don't have to do any manual labor on them. Um, I'm gonna set this aside now, but I'll just keep the onions in there because the next other stuff, I don't use the chopper for. So give me a minute and I'll get it out. By the way, I got my Jesus apron on. Got my Jesus apron on today because Lord, it's been a long time since I did my vegetables. And I said, I need some help from Jesus to make sure I get these all right. Because it's been so long, I done forgot how I did it. So, eh, I got my Jesus apron on. <clears throat> now, let's do this jicama. Now, you can't peel a jicama the same way you peel a rutabaga. The skin is different. The skin of a jicama is like the skin is like a baseball skin. It's like leather. So, you have to just kind of use your knife. And you got to work your way down the edges. Jicama is a different flavor. I like jicama. It is a mildly sweet. It Some people have called it the pear of the vegetable world. Um, it's very versatile. Um, I think it's like, came. I don't know if it came from Mexico, but it's definitely used in Mexico. And the way they do it, used mostly is raw with tahini. Um, I've definitely done it that way. I like it raw on my salads. I have tried using jicama as things. Oh, I've also used it as beans. When I made my ham and beans, um, I have used it as kind of like a sweet potato substitute. Um, whenever I was making some faux sweet potato fries, it, uh, I cooked it in my Instant Pot because <laughs> for some reason, jicama takes like five days to cook it down. Okay, maybe not five days, but about three or four hours to cook it down. It's very strange, but it's a very unique vegetable. Don't be afraid to get it. It's not something that's like, ooh, that's gross. It really is good, and like I said, you can, I, I'm mostly, when I have it, I mostly like it raw on my salads. It just gives you the texture. It's kind of like a water crest, water chestnut. I don't remember what it's called, but anyway, it, it kind of has that texture, but it just honestly, it's a different flavor. It's a really good, clean flavor. Um, now, I will say this. When my Walmart doesn't have good, fresh jicamas, Jicama, if it's not fresh, it doesn't taste bad, okay? But it just has more of an earthy flavor. Um, so I I buy it anyway because I don't. It's not bad because it's going on my salad. I really just love that texture on my salads. 
So, um, but jicama is also a vegetable that's dipped in wax. So, um, so I, I, you know, it, it's just difficult to peel. So, but you see, we peeled it. So, all right, well, hang on, let me get rid of this. I don't want my root, my jicama like chopped up. I like it to have some like almost like cubed or uh, and a lot of times I'll just slice it in half and then use my chopper because that's pretty fast at getting it cube sizes. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do yet, to be quite honest. I'm more focused on just getting it cut in the first place and then seeing because I'm if I was going to do it for beans, like because I've used jicama to make a uh, faux baked beans. <clears throat> I've used it to make um, faux ham and beans. Um, again, I've used it for sweet potato fries, like I fried it or baked it like sweet potato fries. But hang on, I'll be right back. All right, so I've decided I'm not going to do the, um, I, listen, my meal prep days, I have a whole lot of dirty dishes. Now, I've already washed the dishes that are, um, that were from my meat portion. I've already washed those. They're actually in the dryer, um, or in the dishwasher drying right now. But, um, but anyway, so if I got out my little cube thing, that'd just be one more thing I'd have to wash. And if I can just do this, I don't care about the size today. If I really wanted them a special size, then I would get my little cuber thing, my cuber chopper. But I really do not care about the size because it's just going on my salads. Okay, I might have to use a bigger container or at least a second container. We'll see when we're done. Rutabaga, like water chestnut, is very wet. So, um, when you freeze it, oh man, it gets really wet when it's frozen. I mean, I guess most things do because it's licked water in there. But um, but anyway, so um, it is a very, very wet uh, vegetable. I think maybe that's why they call it pear. I don't know why they call it pear. But anyway, but that's that. And now, let's see. Because I do not put, when I build my salad, I do not put the jicama on it when I build my salad. Jicama, when it goes bad, or whenever it starts turning, it gets slimy. And so, by me not adding it whenever I first make my salad, I'm not committed to having slime in my salad. So then, each night, I will add this to my salad. The, the night before, let's see, come on, baby. There, oh, come on, just, just do me right, come on. I don't think this is going to work, y'all. I don't think it's going to work. Oh, it worked enough. Hot diggity. So I've got my paper towel on the bottom of it. And I can put this in the refrigerator. And we'll use this the night before and we'll add it to our salad. Hey, so next we're going to do our, our uh, peppers. And uh, I'm going to show you how I usually do them. But I'm going to show you what I was thinking I could do. And I think it would be good. But I'm not doing it today, but I think it would be kind of fun. So when I do my peppers, I take my thumb on each side of the green stem and I just push it in. That's it. I just push in, in. And then I put my thumbs inside and very slowly and carefully, I peel it open. And so most of the seeds are attached right here at the stem. Now, there are some that's further down um, once in a while, but not usually, but this time I have some on that membrane. But I'm going to use this spoon that uh, Diane sent me. Because I was telling her that I felt like I could do a lot with this spoon. Because we were originally thinking for squash. But I think that's a good way to get that extra membrane out of there. That extra little white piece. Not using it as a knife, but just to kind of scrape it. So that's one way you could do your peppers. But I was also thinking, now I, like I said, I'm not going to do it today, but if I ever wanted to, you could you can do the peppers the same, but don't pull them apart. So now i got to figure out how to get this back out of there. Hang on. Mm. 
All right, so I'm tapping out as many seeds as possible. But then, what I got to thinking is, take this spoon and go inside and scrape it out a little bit. Scrape out any seeds that are still in there. And then, you could do that, and then you could do your, um, what do you call that, stuffed peppers. So if you wanted stuffed peppers, you know, and now you got your hole, got your hole, and and you got out all your seeds. So now you can put pack your meat and whatever it is they put in them in there. But I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to pry it open. But anyway, I just thought, you know what? If somebody wanted to do that, this is one of those. It's a grapefruit spoon, so it's got the little scraped edges. We she got it originally for um, for squash, because when I do my butternut squash, oh my gosh. They're a whole mess um, to scoop it out. But I don't want to like scoop off anything major. I don't want to scoop off any meat of the of the um, of these peppers. But it's just rough enough that it kind of helps me scrape off that yellow membrane vein. I don't know what you want to call it. It's just rough enough that it's scraping that off. So Diane, you see that? You see that? There's more, more than one way, skin a cat, girl. More than one way. All right, I'm going to get through to this, and then we're going to cut up our, our peppers. So hold on. Okay, so now that I have them, them all, I got my knife. And now that I've done that, hold on. Callie has been wound up today. But now you can just cut it in whatever way you want. So you can do long strips or short strips. Or, hold on. I'm sorry. Just a second. Okay, so now they're in long strips. You can cut them, like I usually cut them about three or four times. And now, look, you got little cubes for your, for your peppers. And when I do it, I like to do one of one color, then one of the other color, and then one of another color. And then that way, they're kind of mixed in my thing better. So, um, but you see how easy it is. Like I see these professional chefs doing this really hard stuff with their peppers and I'm like they lay them out and and roll them a certain way I don't even know I can't even but I learned this from um years ago when I first started working um we had a thing at work with our clients and we were kind of showing them I tell you if it ain't one dog gets another we were showing them about eating you know eating some healthy things so like making some uh, chicken fajitas. And so one of the people, one of the clients said her brother works at, was working at Taco Bell and that's how he was taught to do the peppers. So it's pretty cool. Um, you see how fast and easy it was. I don't always stand and chop it with this one. Sometimes I get my little knife and, um, and then do it that way, but doesn't matter however it works, but you saw how simple and easy it was to get the seeds out of there by just keeping them attached to the green top. And now we are done with the peppers. Just like with the other vegetables, I'll put my paper towel on there. Sorry, these guys are wound up today. And I'll have it sitting right there, and that will soak up the juice from the peppers. And I don't add peppers either. You know, I try not to add like the more wet vegetables. I, I try to draw, when I make my salads, I use cabbage, onions, and the rutabaga. That's what I put in there standard. And then everything else just goes in, like even tomatoes, because tomatoes go bad too. So, all right, I'll be right back. When I first went keto, I did not know really about making my salads this far in advance. Um, I didn't do it. Oh, I forgot my onions. Hold on. Okay. I was only making my salads um, the night before. And so, I don't know, in doing that, one of you all along the way mentioned this whole paper towel method. It's like, well, duh, thank you, brilliant. So I actually up here on my, right here, I, I brought them back. 
So for my salad prep, cabbage 120 grams, onion 60 grams, bagus 60 grams. So this is what I'll do on the weekend. During the week, I'll leave this open and I'll, I can add cucumbers, peppers, jicama, and tomatoes. I've got the amount so the night before I can add those things. So, um, so what we're doing today is just, you know, prepping the salads. So we're going to start by doing 30 grams of red onions and we'll do 30 grams of white onions. So 30, 30, it's 34. Now listen, I am not exact because I'm not going to freak out about it. I just want them to be, a, yeah, I want them to be 60 grams. So we're going to make these until we have 60 grams of onions in each one. So we're going to just start with onions today. And if it's a tad over, it's okay. I'd rather it be closer, but all right. So anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and finish. Now why are you weighing less than the other one? I'm going to go ahead and finish, and um, I will be back, and we will add the next thing. So we have one container worth of yellow onions left, and one container worth of red onions left so I'll put it in here and I'll store it upside down and throughout the week if I want to make something into like a burger like a burger in a bowl I can put dump some of these onions in it and that would be very very yum yum in my tongue but in the meantime I'll store them in here upside down now we'll get to the rutabaga in just a second so next up we're adding 60 grams of rutabaga I zeroed it out and then we'll put 60 grams. It'll be a little off, but that ain't gonna cry. <clears throat> Zero that out. And about 60 grams of rutabaga. So I'm gonna get 60 grams in each one, and I will be back. Okay, so I have the rutabaga done. Now I'm going to just put this in here. And like I said, rutabaga well, uh, rutabaga lasts one to two weeks in the refrigerator, and um, I've used mine two weeks in a row, and it worked just fine. So this container right here, rutabaga, <clears throat> I'll put back in the refrigerator, and we'll use this next weekend whenever we make our salads for the week. So last step, we're doing around 120 grams of cabbage. It might be a little more or a little less, but each of these has 454 grams, so... It really is around 110, 112. So I just zero it out. 115 in that one. And I just zero it out. Now listen, when I was not, when I was not really counting, like, you know, the past, before I started this, I wasn't really counting. I was just making, you know what I mean? So I was not trying to count, but since I'm trying to really count because I want to, I really want to track my fat. And so I really want to see if I can lower my cholesterol. And um, so I'm going to be tracking as best as I can. Give or take a little bit. Oop, that's 130. 20. All right, that'll be good. So <clears throat> that's one package. Now let's do this other one. Divide this up into four. Okay, 110 ish. So the reason why, for those who might be new to my channel and have only seen me when I was doing the carnivore reset, the reason why I did the carnivore reset, I was having some severe chest pain. And, you know, I wasn't sure if it was from, I honestly knew it wasn't from the vegetables because I've been eating vegetables for two years, but I wasn't sure if it was from the oatmeal or the grits or whatever. So I really wanted to strip myself of anything that was potentially inflammatory to see if the, oh my, if the pain went away 
but the pain did not go away. I still had trouble sleeping. So as you're watching me eat this stuff, and I complain about the chest pain and stuff, I just want you to know I did, you know, 21 days of no veggies and gave up the things that could have caused me the chest pain, and it didn't work. So we are now back to how I was eating before. And because uh, I ain't going to give it up if I don't need to. So now I'm just going to go ahead and make little make little hats, make little beds for each one. We're going to tuck each one in. We're going to tuck our little salad in. Alright, now we're going to put our lids on. The reason why I do eight is because I have eight containers. Um, I used to do seven. But um, it works out perfect with the amount of cabbage that's in the little baggie. And these containers are wonderful because whenever I, at night time, whenever I get everything packed and I put it in my lunchbox, I can't tell y'all how many times I dumped out my stuff. So these have been a wonderful addition to my, to my salad making. So... All right, two left. Okay, that's how I do my vegetable meal prep. And there we go. I'm gonna get these put away and we gotta, and uh, ah, yeah. So I'm gonna get these put away and have a good day, you guys. So I told y'all I kind of wrote up this little eating plan for eating low fat. And um, in my breakfast, what I kind of plotted out for a lot of breakfast would be one serving of the two good Greek yogurt. Instead, I got Faye, which is fine. And then great value cottage cheese. And I'm in, for breakfast, I still have some of my burgers made. So I'm just going to leave those in. The, I'll keep those in the rotation. But I'm also going to go ahead and make these up too. So I may have yogurt and cottage cheese sometimes, or I may have burger and cheese, at least until I get those burgers gone. Um, but my plan is to have a serving of each of these and three eggs. Uh, I didn't write down like the total macros for that, but you'll be seeing that as we go along. So <clears throat> what I needed to do is I've got each of these containers make six servings. So gonna make six servings so this Faye Greek yogurt it's hundred and seventy grams so oh I always forget this one comes like with a little its own little cover I think that's kind of random all right so hundred and seventy grams So now I'm going to fill all six of these with the 170 grams of the, of the Faye Greek yogurt. And then we will, uh, then we'll do the cottage cheese. So I checked the macros because, by the way, there was only five servings in that. I thought there were six, but I, you know, half the time I can't read. But anyway, so there, I took, check the macros. So a serving of the Faye yogurt. A serving of this uh, low fat, great value cottage cheese and, a, and three boiled eggs. It's going to be 302 calories, 42 protein, 12 total carbs, and 10 fat. Please remember, please remember, right now I'm more worried about getting my cholesterol under control than worrying about my total carb intake. If my total carb intake is let's see wait it's 113 if my total carb intake is in the 150s and i get my cholesterol down to where i don't have to take any medication i'll be good at it so just just remember that this week as you see me eating or next week whenever you see me eating this stuff 
just remember and and yes i have seen all the doctors and all the online doctors who say what they say about medications and i don't care because they're not my doctor and i'm they're not seeing me and my lab results and they don't know my family history and my history so um you know i know all the online doctors say this that and the other but they're they're not my doctor and so uh, you really, none of us should be taking medical advice from doctors online. And that includes me. I ain't, just because I'm a nurse, I'm not your nurse. So just because you see me do something doesn't mean you should do it. You all have to do, figure out what's best for you based on your body and your knowledge and your doctor's information. So I'm just throwing that out there. So like I said, I know there's plenty of online doctors that'll say, oh, cholesterol, this, that, and the other. And that's all right. They can have their opinions. I totally respect their opinion. But they're not living in my body. And they're not the one experiencing chest pain. So, all right. So, that is how I'm going to do my, make up my breakfast. Like I said, there's five of them. And then in the morning, what I'll do is I'll add my, um, my one of my flavorings. That's what I did when I had this before, because I was eating this whenever I was losing my weight. I ate this most mornings when I was in calorie counting mode. You can do grape, you can do just whatever flavor of these you want to, if, if you want to, or you can just keep them plain, because I mean, this right here, yogurt and cottage cheese, that's carnivore too. Um, anyway, so yeah, so that's going to be my breakfast, and um. I got one serving left of that. So those are going to be five breakfasts that I'll have made up for the week. And then along with them, like I said, I'll have three boiled eggs with these. So there you go. That's going to be my, my cholesterol lowering breakfast. <laughs>